Hi everyone, welcome to the Drum Channel. Thanks again for watching. My name is Adrian. Today, this is uh, part one of uh, two videos. We're going to talk about three basic rudiments. Now, most of you out there, I'm assuming most of you will know what these are. For those of you that don't, um, I'm glad you're watching because this will change your life. These three basic rudiments are kind of the fundamentals of, of drumming. And I say they're basic because in their simplest form, they are very basic. But if you look at some some key players around the you know of the times, they use this stuff to their <laughs> to their benefit very fast uh, and not so basic. So what I'm going to show you today is kind of the fundamentals of of these rudiments, and then what you do with them after that is really up to you. But we're going to go through a couple of ideas. Um, before I get into that, I'm going to go even back a step further and talk a little bit about holding the stick. Um, I don't think this gets talked enough, you know, about that that much. Um, and there's so many variations. And I'm going to give you my take on this, holding the stick. For me, anyway, the stick needs to split up into thirds, okay? So I don't know if you can see that, but thirds. And I grip the stick using the first crease of my finger, my middle, my index finger, and the thumb. So usually about there, okay? The reason for that is is pretty simple. I saw a video of Dave Weckl talking about this exact uh, thing, and he was talking about the rebound of the stick. If you hold the stick too far up, it doesn't actually rebound at all. If you hold the stick too far back, it sort of dies into the drum. But if you hold it in the right spot, at about a third of the way up, it should rebound, it looks kind of like a bouncing ball. And for me, that is kind of really speaks for itself as to why you would hold it in that spot. So I see some people holding it back here. I see some people holding it, you know, up there. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. That's really the point. Now, some people will say that that particular point of holding the stick with the first finger and the thumb is not really the way to get to get rebound. I've seen, again, Dave Weckl hold, talks about holding the stick from back here. And I've seen some people say that you must run the stick down your arm like that and then turn your hand over and that's, that's your position like that. But as soon as you go to the ride symbol, that doesn't necessarily make sense anymore. So sometimes you will look at having a stick in that position like that or your thumb facing the ceiling in the finger position like that. So grips do change. I, I think dramatically they change from, from being over here to being over here. That's a, that's a fundamental difference in your, in your stick technique. So therefore, when you're practicing the stuff I'm about to show you, the rudiments, it's important to sort of switch your grip between sort of palms turned over and then fingers facing the th th you know, thumb facing the ceiling in the finger position like that. Something to think about anyway. So don't feel like you have to kind of keep your, keep your grip like this and then when you get over here. As long as you're not sort of holding them like f knives and forks, you know, as long as you're maintaining this sort of technique like that or like that if you, if you prefer with your, with your index finger being a guide. As long as you're doing that, as long as you're getting the rebound you need, then that technique seems to be working for you. All right, there are plenty of other ideas that you can, you can check out. Obviously, I haven't talked about traditional grip at all. Um, that's probably for another lesson. Today, you know, you know, I'm going to be using match grip, but yeah, see what you think about that. Okay, rudiments, three basic rudiments. We're going to talk about the single stroke roll, the double stroke roll, and the paradiddle. Again, if you've seen this stuff before, great. Still hang around and have a listen though, because you, know, you might find something you, you, know, you didn't know. Um, okay, single stroke roll, very, very easy to start with. All it is is alternating strokes back and forth from the, I'm going to start on the right hand and then go to the left hand, trying to make them as even as I possibly can. And uh, single stroke roll sounds like this. Pretty crazy. Bit faster.
single stroke roll. So my technique changes a little bit from palms turned over. So when I get a bit faster, I, I tend to use my fingers. So, um, Okay, double stroke roll. We're going to talk about that. Pretty self-explanatory. Two per hand. Okay, so we're going to start right, right, left, left. And a little faster for you. That's a double stroke roll. Okay, we're going to move on to one last one. The funny name, the paradiddle. And basically, paradiddle, for me anyway, it means basically single, double, single, double. So we're going to talk about right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So it's a complete opposite of each other for the second four, four notes. Um, paradiddle looks like this. Now, the thing about the paradiddle compared to the single and the double stroke is that you, you sort of have to remember it off the top of your head. You can't really think right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left when you get to the faster speeds. So something just to, to memorize your, you know, in your head, get the, uh, the sticking down. Once you've got that, then you'll be able to start to, to pick it up. I think of it a bit like walking. You don't think about walking. You just walk, right? So paradiddle is a bit like that. I can't think that fast to go right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left at warp speed, okay? Not that I can play at warp speed, but here we'll try it a little bit faster for you. And I'm going to try and make them all very even. We'll see how we go. There is a paradiddle. Okay. Last thing I'm going to talk about in this particular lesson to start with is the paradiddle. A very, very useful way of, of learning the paradiddle is by putting an accent on the first part of the paradiddle and then the second part of the paradiddle. In terms of the way we use the paradiddle, as a rudiment, it's one of the best for actually moving around the drums and accents is a great way of doing it. So... What we're going to do now is I'm going to put a little emphasis on the right at the start and then I'm going to put a little emphasis on the left in the middle to the left, right, left, left and I'm going to make all the other strokes fairly soft in between. Okay? Here we go. Okay, so even just hearing what I've done there on the snare, you can sort of imagine where that can start to lead to in terms of those three rudiments, you know, moving around the drums. They're so uh, crucial to playing drums. I mean, if you go and just hit the drum, you're using a single stroke roll. Anybody that never played drums before, they sit on a drum kit and you give them the sticks and they go whack, 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 whack. Chances are they're using single strokes, okay? Or double strokes, all right? And most things we play are actually a combination of both of those. Paradiddle for the, you know, for the first part being that, okay? Um, some prelim sort of exercises to start with. You can just start to move the, move the strokes around the drums, getting used to your setup, okay? I've got, you know, a bit of a different sort of setup, you know, basic four-piece kit with another snare. If you might have two toms, you know, just start moving the rudiments around just to get your movement happening. You know, say, for instance, paradiddle, um, I'll just start moving it around the drums a little bit just to sort of get the hands moving in and feel these different grips moving around the drums. So check this out. So 
sort of get the drift a little bit faster. Etc. Et and I'm not necessarily using that as a, as a fill or anything like that. I'm just playing around just to get comfortable moving around the drums. And obviously, you speed that up and and, and you know, so, you know, a bit more like this. <laughs> Completely random. I'm just you know, like I said, sussing out my hands. Um, have fun with that. Get used to the idea of using this stuff all the time. The next video coming up, we're going to take it a little step further. So stick around for that. We'll see you soon.